That's the best we, we could do. That the pump is damaged before you start and they find those scratches, they're not going to blame me for, for it. Okay, so starting a tub area today, new tub. I'm gonna put up the boards here. There's gonna be two niches, one here and one here. I'm gonna push this one that way and I'm gonna push this one that way. They're not gonna be symmetrical, the homeowner knows that. And so I'm gonna be putting up hydroband board. This is the existing floor. It's a six by six with a dot, very colorful. There's a dot missing there, and there's a dot missing there. They saved the dot somewhere. So let me show you the tile downstairs. So this is the wall tile. It's just an eight by eight ceramic white wall tile. And this is gonna be the feature stripe that goes uh, through on the, on the walls th and through the niche. And this is gonna be in the back of the niche. It's gonna be about five rows. I'm gonna be put, mounting this on a sheet membrane so that I can make it work. So yeah, so I'm gonna put the hydrogen board up now. And so let's get to it. Okay, so the tub is all protected. So this is, tub was actually a replacement tub. So they got a brand new tub. They went to install it. They found it was it was damaged, so they had to get rid of that tub. And they brought in this new tub. That's what delayed this job. So now I come in and I very carefully inspected the tub and found a couple of scratches in it, minor scratches. But I informed the GC so that when I clear out all this protection and I'm done and they find those scratches, they're not going to blame me for, for it. So you want to make sure you take pictures and inform whoever needs to be informed that the pump is damaged before you start doing anything. That way they, won't, they, they can't say to you, well, you know, it was perfectly fine before you came. No. Document, make sure you don't own that tub. So here's a quick little tip when you're hanging any kind of board. I'm gonna to have to put a bead to seal it down here. And uh, so instead of trying to put the sealant, then bringing the board in and then trying to place it, just put, a, put it in place, put a screw to hold it down, to hold it up, put your bead, Remove the screw, push it down into place, and then screw it off. Makes it a lot easier. I know it's a simple tip, most guys probably know it, but for those that don't, there's a little tip. Now if I put these together, this tile is a little thicker than this one. And then by the time I get the thin set on here, it's gonna be even, even higher. So I'm gonna have to build this up. So the easiest way to do that is get a membrane, a sheet membrane, and cement the tile to the sheet membrane. Now I'm exactly even with this here. So and this after a couple of days you put you set this on the membrane, then after a couple of days it becomes a panel. So you do need to let it dry for a couple of days. So anyway, I have all my nice sheets all ready to go. So I got one, two, there's like six sheets. So I'm gonna first spread my thin set with this trowel. It's an eighth inch square notch trowel. And then I'm gonna flatten the ridges with the putty knife. Then I'm gonna set my tile. I'm gonna beat it in with the rubber float. And then it'll be all done. So let's get to it. Okay, because this is glass, I'm using an ANSI A118.15 mortar. High polymer content mortar. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Actually, 
actually. Almost forgot. I think I'm gonna need a deeper trowel. Okay, so I'm gonna use a deeper trowel. This is why you always check your coverage. That's much better. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Taking off any material, just flattening the ridges so it doesn't squeeze through. So I just did some layout for my tile to know what cuts I got and where I have to put the the two niches. There's going to be two niches over here. So let me show you what I did. So this is the tile, eight by eight, and this is. Both. So I made a storyboard. Go up and down there. So now I don't need this tile anymore. I found my center line, and then I used my storyboard left to right to see what my cuts are and up and down to see what I get up and down and on the sides start with a simple nose right here you know the end is the bull nose that small piece and then that's my cut on the other side so when I, you know, the drop off from that side plus this side here will make it look like a full tile. So that actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to have like a three inch piece on the bottom. I'm going to have like a six and a half inch piece. I mean, six and a half inch piece on the bottom and about a three inch piece on the top. So that's not too bad. The top is not level, so I have to cut the bottom. Then the niche is not going to be centered because just the way the studs are so this is one niche here where the dotted lines are and I'm going to get this is where a stud is this is where another stud is and another stud so I have to leave room for the thickness of the board and then that's 12 inches from there to there and 24 inches from there to there and the same over over here so that's all going to work out fine so Got my layout done gonna start mixing some thin set cutting some tile okay so I got the niches in and I started the tile but I had to modify the niche uh, because he didn't have enough of the glass tile let me show you the glass tile so that's the glass tile it didn't have enough for a 24 inch niche but he does have enough for an 18 inch because we're gonna so we're gonna be doing a, a border five rows 
all the way around the niche is going to be all that tile all that tile and then the board is going to go around here so he didn't have enough for a 24 inch niche but he has enough for two 18 inch niches so they're side by side it's not centered it's just with the way the studs were that's the best way we could do um side by side